Ah! Okay, okay, sorry, I got a little bit too excited there. Uh, but with good reason, because this chapter is pure and absolute excitement, because it features both Luffy and Zoro using a completely new type of hacky they haven't used before, being advanced conqueror's hacky. But the actual application of it isn't fully clear or explained, so let's break it down so we can properly understand how it works. Let's get started. As the chapter starts with Kaido attempting to go after Zoro, Law protects him by attacking Kaido with Injection Shot, an attack he's used in the past against the likes of Treble and Doflamingo. This attack, much like all of Law's moves, is a reference to medical operations, referring to the injection shots that are taken with syringes. Much like how those are able to go beyond the skin and deliver its contents inside the body, Law's attacks manage to pierce through Kaido and hurt him on the inside despite not being able to cut through his skin. This allows him to bypass Kaido's unpierceable skin to hurt him from the inside, with even Kaido acknowledging this through his comment. The kanji reading for the attack simply uses the Japanese word for injection. Law then uses a new move called Curtain, which creates a transparent shield to block Kaido's attack, similar to the use of the Bari Bari no Mi. Once again, this references medical operations by referring to the curtains used in hospitals and operating rooms. However, in this case, Kaido is still able to hit Law as this curtain is now strong enough to block the attack. The phonetic reading of this move is the English word curtain, but the kanji reading instead reads as Kokin Buso or Antibiotic Armament. The word used, Buso, is the same as Buso Shukuhaki, Armament Haki, indicating that he could be using his haki to shield himself here. Skipping a bit ahead, Kaido comments on how Luffy is still glaring at him. This is, just like I mentioned in a previous video, a reference to earlier in Wano, where, after being hit by the Raime Hake, or Thunder Bagua, a defeated Luffy still glared at Kaido with his Conqueror's Haki, leading to the first allusion to this chapter's title, Haoshoku or Conquerors. This is why, a couple chapters ago, Kaido stated that Luffy's eyes never seem to die, because Conqueror's Haki is depicted to come out of the eye. That said, Zoro decides to go all out to attack Kaido and at last, after so many years, he finally draws out once again his Kyutoryu, or Nine Sword style. This is his first time using Kyutoryu since the Pride Timescape last used against a pacifista in chapter 510, an exact 500 chapters ago. And he unleashes this form with a new attack which is called... Kiki Kyutoryu Ashura Bakkei Moja no Tawamure. That's a mouthful. For starters, the first three words are the same he uses for all his Kyutoryu attacks. Kiki means demonic wheel, Kyutoryu simply means nine sword style, and Asura refers to a type of demon in Buddhism, as well as Hinduism, but Zoro's attacks refer to Buddhism, which is commonly practiced in Japan. The demon Asura is usually depicted as having three pairs of arms, for a total of six arms, just like Zoro's Kyutoryu form, where he manifests his willpower to make it look like he multiplied into three. Even Kaku himself, back in his lobby, commented on how this is a manifestation of Zoro's will, which makes sense since Kiki, demonic will, even uses the same kanji as Haki, conqueror's will, which makes me wonder if this is implying that Zoro learned to channel his willpower from all the way since Enya's lobby. Though, to be clear, back then Oda only had a vague idea about Haki, so this could by all means be a retcon in that case, and I don't think that it means that he was able to use Conqueror's Haki back then or anything, just that he was able to draw out his willpower back then, and even here he is able to draw his willpower again, but this time he is able to pull out his Conqueror's which is why he is able to use his conquerors to imbue his sword and be able to hurt Kaido. As for the new part of the attack, uh, Bakke means uh, drawn sword, while Moja no Tawamure means dead man's play, a reference to Zoro being practically dead in an instance like this one. So, the attack Kiki Kyutoryu Asura Bakke Moja no Tawamure fully translates to as Demonic Wheel, Nine Sword Style Asura, bare bladed dead man's play. And a really cool detail that might be easy to miss is that the scar that Zoro leaves on Kaido is in the exact same shape as the scar Mihawk left on Zoro all that time ago at the start of the series. It seems that at this point Zoro is finally starting to catch up with Mihawk. However, what's even crazier is in fact the confirmation that Zoro has Conqueror's Haki, something that many expected but still comes out as quite a shock, making him the 16th character in the series confirmed to have Conqueror's Haki. 
And with this comment about Kaido, this also confirms Kaido officially without any doubt having conquered Haki, though that obviously is not as much of a surprise. Just like I stated before, Kaku said that Kyutoryu was a manifestation of Zoro's own will, so once again here he was able to draw out his own will to be able to awaken Conqueror's Haki. This also makes Brook's joke a few chapters ago much more relevant because it means that was Oda sneakily teasing us of future events to come. But with that said, Kaido still manages to strike down both Zoro and Law with a Raime Hake, which also appears to be stronger as he seems to have coded it in advanced Hake just like he did with his attack last week. However, just as all hope seems lost, Luffy gets back up again. As we've seen before, time and time again, Luffy's greatest strength is that he can lose. No matter how many times he loses, he will always get back up. He can be defeated, humiliated and battered, but he will always get back up again. Because he's made of rubber. And at this point, Luffy finally understands what Hyogoro mentioned about some people being able to use Haki in such a way that it can destroy someone from the inside. In this case, one applies Conqueror's Haki to their armament Haki so they can code their body or weapon through it, since, as we've seen, Luffy is using armament Haki here in tandem with Conqueror's. Using one's willpower of Conqueror's to envy attacks gives it a lot more utility than just defeating weak enemies and makes these attacks so much more devastating. This is the exact same thing that Roger and Whitebeard did, imbuing their Conqueror's Haki into their armament, which is why we saw this Conqueror's Clash during their attack. This would also explain why their blades didn't touch, because it was the auras of Conqueror's Haki that were clashing with each other, not the weapons. In much the same way we've seen two spheres of Conqueror's Haki clash with each other in the past, without the users themselves coming into contact, in this case both of the auras clash with each other instead of the blades. And here we see it applied once again with the aura hitting Kaido without the need to touch it. That said though, it doesn't look like Luffy's attack is as strong as Kaido's yet, since while we do see black lightning coming out of it, it isn't quite as big, but that said, he is still definitely getting there and he will definitely get as strong as Kaido and potentially one day even Whitebeard and Roger if he keeps honing it. And so we see Luffy applying this haki by hitting Kaido directly without even touching him. Even Law comments on this, stating that, just like Odin did, that they aren't even touching. Luffy uses this advanced haki to block Kaido's attack with his foot and then to deliver a punch to the stomach and then an uppercut to his jaw. With this, the final battle against Kaido is finally starting. I'm sure this will still go on for a long while, especially as we focus on other battles against the Flying Six, but regardless, we're there. We're finally there. It's surreal to see Luffy standing toe-to-toe -to -toe against a Yonko. It's something we've dreamed of seeing for so long, and finally, we're getting to see this in the manga. Luffy is standing at the pinnacle of the pirate world, and I'm sure that what is going to come is going to be even more exciting. But what do you think about this chapter? Are you as excited as I am about this? Let me know, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Kiki, Kyutoryu, Ashura, Bakke, Moja no Tawamure. Kiki, Kyutoryu, Ashura, Bakke, Moja no Tawamure.